Hi everybody, Scott here from the Introvert Power channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about INFJ boundaries. And when it comes to boundaries, there's so many variables that come into play when it comes to boundary setting and, and why we can have issues with boundaries. So in this video, I'm certainly not going to cover everything. Uh, my attempt is to try to um, grab onto some of the main concepts of boundaries, especially from an INFJ perspective, although I think anybody watching will be able to get something out of, uh, out of this video uh, in the area of developing boundaries. So the first thing I want to look at is the cognitive functions for the INFJ. So introverted intuition and extroverted feeling, if we just look at those two main functions, um, I guess I want to start by saying that they are, one is able to set um, and develop and set boundaries with those functions. However, they're not naturally as robust or um, natural, if you like, at setting boundaries. As a, if we look at extroverted thinking, uh, even um, or, uh, even extroverted sensing, these type of functions tend to be um, more decisive uh, when it comes to uh, addressing something that uh, the person's not comfortable with, or, or and th there just seems to be a more of a toughness, if you like, of those cognitive functions. Uh, for the INFJ, um, like I said, it's possible to set and develop good boundaries with our functions, with the NI and the FE. However, for a lot of INFJs, there is um, developmental issues, if you like, although that might sound um, heavy. It's really that the INFJ very rarely has another INFJ growing up to help mirror the INFJ style of processing. So um, what I think happens for a lot of INFJs is the introverted intuition is for the most part unconscious, unrecognized. It's the INFJ essentially is alone in that function and doesn't even rec recognize they have it uh, a lot of the time because it's not being mirrored by anybody. And so the INFJ usually uh, spends more time uh, operating, if you like, out of that extroverted feeling function. And if, uh, if a person has had a difficult childhood, then they're kind of handicapped by not having access to their introverted intuition on a uh, conscious level. And so that extroverted feeling kind of be, can become, I should say, a function that is there to essentially become a people pleaser. That, that, that function is designed to pick up the environment, pick up on the emotions of others. And without that intuition to sort of guide and regulate that, that function, the INFJ can, can be vulnerable in uh, just caring and looking after the needs of others. And uh, what that can do is set up an INFJ to be attracted to one-sided intimacy relationships where they're the ones giving out and meeting the need of the other although and not being met themselves. Um, uh, and we'll go into uh, all of that in, a, in more detail later. And on a more serious note, it can leave INFJs vulnerable to being attracted, uh, having people uh, like that, that sort of sociopath personality um, being attracted to the INFJ because there's sort of like un, unregulated extroverted feeling, if you like, um, is giving out and and those sort of sociopath, sociopath personality types um, uh, see it as a, as a a source of energy to be fed and nurtured and um, given to, and uh, yet the INFJ doesn't receive anything back, and in fact is l left vulnerable to being treated quite poorly 
by those sorts of personality types. So there can be some very serious ramifications for um, this undeveloped introverted intuition. Um, but on a more general level, it can just lead to uh, poor boundaries, poor boundary setting, and um, we'll go into it more later. And I've made a video for my patrons on, on Patreon uh, called um, Don't Waste Your F.E. Time, which uh, goes into uh, some of what I've just talked about in a lot more detail. So if you're interested to check out that video, um, click on the patron, uh, sorry, the Patreon link below for uh, more information on how to become a, a patron. What can sort of happen for some INFJs, which is um, an interesting um, situation, if you like, is the INFJ can become like their own experiment when it comes to understanding the world and the motivations of people and so on. Now, what I mean by becoming their own experiment is that because some INFJs uh, are not in touch with their introverted intuition, they're sort of vulnerable to the ebbs and flows of other people's behavior. And what can sort of can happen for some people is that they end up having, uh, they end up being treated a certain way or finding themselves in certain situations that um, might not be ideal or healthy for them. But then the INFJ can study that situation um, and learn about people's motives, understand uh, how people tick and things like this. So it's like they become their own case study, which is a, uh, a problematic way to do it because it can lead to painful circumstances and consequences. However, I think it's kind of like a secondary way of, of developing um, and growing, if you like, it's kind of like that, is I can't, I'm not being assertive with what I want and, in, and putting myself out there uh, to let people know that I exist and have a reality and, and have preferences and boundaries uh, because that's not in, in uh, operation the INFJ then kind of learns from uh, and, and learns from and understands people and their motives by kind of letting it all happen to them. And then they process it all to learn about uh, people and themselves and so on. It's just a much more painful way to go. However, I think for some INFJs where that's happening, that that can ultimately lead to boundary setting uh, either through um, insight, through what is learnt there, or enough the, their, them being in enough pain to um, do something about what's happening to them. And then that can lead to boundary setting and a more healthier approach down the track. Um, however, I think that's a, um, a survival strategy as opposed to a, like a living strategy. So broadly speaking, when we're talking about boundaries, we're talking about physical boundaries, talking about emotional and psychological boundaries and spiritual boundaries. Um, I'm going to cover the, the first three or two, depending on how you want to look at it, those physical, emotional and um, psychological. Um, so I'm going to cover those three in this video. The issue of spiritual boundaries uh, I cover in my other channel uh, and the link is in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, that video will be looking at spiritual boundaries from the perspective of spiritual abuse in religious institutions and what that can look like. Um, so it's it's quite specific. Um, that video is quite specific when it comes to spiritual boundaries. Um, however, I would, you know, some would argue that this video I'm talking about is a spiritual um, is spiritual if you like um, when we're protecting ourselves physically and psychologically emotionally that is a spiritual process in and of itself so the reality of undefined boundaries leads to all sorts of problems for people um, at the very least it just can set up um, a person to just be confused um, and 
uh, you know, not have a lot of life direction or purpose, things like that. Um, although that saying that uh, that that can be quite a serious issue as well, not having life direction. Uh, but it can set up um, a person for all the sorts of issues that bring people to counselling. You know, stress, depression, anxiety, grief, loneliness. All of these sorts of issues can be um, the fruit, if you like, of poor boundaries. And one of the reasons for all of that is poor boundaries essentially can lead to exhaustion because the, 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 the INFJ is um, trying to look after themselves and but are also giving out beyond what they should be or what's healthy. And so the energy that's supposed to be reserved for self-regulation and, and looking after the self is spent it's like giving out to other people, other people take it, whether it's time, energy, resources, um, job positions, these sorts of things are all um, taken or given away is probably a, a more appropriate or um, accurate description. The INFJ is giving all of this away. And so um, this can lead to an exhaustion and um, that exhaustion over a long period of time can lead to all of these other sort of emotional issues. And what can happen for a lot of people is they then go to a doctor uh, to uh, prescribe, be prescribed some medication that ends up addressing or trying to deal with those symptoms and they bypass actually addressing the, the real uh, underlying cause of the exhaustion, the stress, the anxiety, the depression, or whatever they're experiencing. Uh, however, I would say that um, medication for some people might be necessary to at least um, create a bit of a stable foundation for the person to actually address those deeper issues. From a cognitive function perspective, it is really important that the INFJ develop their introverted intuition because it's going to be that function that informs them of what uh, what is going on around them uh, uh, you know that that ability that that introverted intuition has a very powerful ability to recognize when people are being deceptive or are trying to take advantage or these sorts of things so uh, that introverted intuition is really important that that gets developed in order for the INFJ to be informed with what's going on around them so that they can then take action to protect themselves and look after themselves. So in a sense, the INFJ needs to build trust in themselves, build confidence in themselves first. So that can be done uh, in a few ways. Um, the INFJ can start if if they're being quite contained in themselves, not not communicating much uh, in their lives, especially if they're a verbal processor. Th it's really important then that the INFJ be communicating, talking to somebody about what's going on in their world to um, uh, be affirmed in what they're sensing and and also challenged in what they're sensing, so that they can begin to hone that introverted intuition. Uh, recognize when it's accurate and recognize when it's actually um, uh, not that it's not accurate but that it the INFJ might be like doing an NITI loop and kind of coming up with a faulty conclusion so that FE in a sense if you like in this situation is kind of extroverting with another what they're intu intuiting to be able to get some feedback and it's important to find someone that is um, able to has insight themselves to be able to affirm what the INFJ is noticing because um, uh, for, for some people uh, and some personality types they might not recognize uh, it, in a sense the wisdom that's coming out of that introverted intuition and may want to dismiss it because it just doesn't seem as um, the conclusions aren't backed up necessarily by the logic that comes more naturally to other people. Finding someone to sort of affirm their introverted intuition, to affirm themselves and to help uh, sort of hone that introverted intuition insight 
which then builds confidence, which then enables the INFJ to build, um, oh, sorry, not build, but uh, uh, assert what it is that they, what they're, sorry, assert what it is that they're knowing about a given situation. So it's um, trust in the self builds confidence to assert oneself. So the developing of introverted intuition uh, will then give that extroverted feeling um, more information, if you like, in order to in, into how it extroverts itself. So if that NI is being dulled, then FE for a lot of people can then be used uh, is sort of done as a people pleasing function, if you like. It's trying to care for everybody else or um, look after other people instead of the, the, the self. So that NI development will then lead to the INFJ, not just extroverting to look after others, but extrovert to look after themselves, to protect themselves, to uh, create a space where they can exist in. For some INFJs, feeling their own feelings can be a, a bit elusive, uh, partly because of being an extroverted feeler, they're, they're more attuned to others and then responding to what they're feeling about what others are feeling. So um, for the INFJ, is, is part of that development is really learning to recognize what it is that they're feeling and why they're feeling it and to place more value on what it is that they are feeling themselves. And uh, without going into it in a lot of detail, it's then learning to, they're learning how to um, both feel one's own feelings and then look at the why of those feelings to determine if, uh, you know, sort of determine what action do I need to take in this situation um, that's appropriate. For some INFJs, uh, because of that extroverted feeling function, um, and also maybe what's being modeled to them either in family of origin or in the rest of the world is that we can we can see assertiveness as aggression we can actually see someone being assertive so let me say that differently um, assertiveness can occur without aggression however the world tends to use aggression to be assertive and that is very crushing for an INFJ. That that aggression is very um, uh, is very debilitating for them, and and uh, uncomfortable. And so the INFJ can get that sense that to be assertive is to be aggressive, and I don't want to be aggressive. Um, so so it kind of nullifies their ability to to um, respond. So it's important to see that actually assertiveness is not necessarily and really isn't aggression. Assertiveness can take place even whilst speaking very calmly and very quietly because it's it's the sort of conviction of what's being said that lets people know where we stand and what we expect uh, or what we would like, not the aggressive um, communication. The aggressive communication is more of a bully tactic to get what, what what one wants as opposed to assertiveness, which is just being clear uh, about the boundary and communicating it in a calm and um, direct way, in, in an assertive way, in order to um, be heard and uh, have a boundary enforced. Another challenge INFJs can have is that they can fall into a trap of thinking that because they can see um, the feelings of others and maybe even why they're feeling it, that they want that to be done to themselves. They want the other people to be able to do that to them or even maybe unconsciously um, um, want that to happen. And the reality is, is very few people can do that, uh, even know how to do it, and very f even fewer than that would want to be able to do that. So it's important for INFJs to be come to a place of accepting that 
most other people cannot pick up what they're feeling or why they're feeling it. And that there, re there requires on the INFJ's um, side of things the decision to actually communicate assertively what it is that they're feeling or, and or why they're feeling it. That it's not going to be guessed or um, figured out by others without you actually communicating it. And for a lot of people, um, they don't even have enough awareness to actually ask questions to find out if the INFJ is, is feeling something. So that can be very a very disappointing reality for INFJs, but it is a real one. And so INFJs need to learn uh, how to communicate what it is that they want and what it is that they might be feeling um, to those in their lives. So it's important to remember that FE essentially is the way the INFJ will assert their reality and their boundaries. And that when the INFJ is in touch with their introverted intuition, which really lets them know uh, uh, what's going on in their environment and what they need to do about it, um, when the INFJ is dealing with healthy people, when they extrovert their boundary, healthy people will respond to that uh, in an appropriate and respectful way. Those that aren't healthy will, uh, will want to push back and reject those boundaries. So it's important for the INFJ to recognize the healthy versus the unhealthy people. Another reason for INFJs um, being exploited for not having um, strong boundaries is often a lack of life direction, partly due to um, that, that um, introverted intuition not being consciously um, available to them, uh, which I just want to make a quick point that even with INFJs that grow up not, and most of them are like this, don't have that NI reflected back to them and affirmed, it's still developing. It, it is there, it's still gathering information, it's still developing, it's just happening more unconsciously. So the, the trick for INFJs is to become more aware of their intuition in real time. And that enables um, boundaries to be set and also enables life direction to occur. So if you can imagine someone that doesn't have a purpose or life direction is kind of like a wandering soul, um, then people will naturally pick up on that and, and want to take advantage of that person as a resource because it's like, well, they don't have life direction or purpose, so I'll get them to fulfill my life direction and purpose. And so the INFJ ends up, um, you know, looking after other people doing doing things for others so and the doing things for others is not uh, an issue in and of itself it's when it's done um, beyond sort of it's almost done for significance or it's done um, at, at the detriment of the INFJ's in a self, if you like, that it is a problem. So it's more the why of the giving and the doing versus rather than the fact that they're giving and doing. So and the INFJ developing their intuition will help sort of fire up their and discover their life's purpose and direction. And so once once the INFJ has that going on in their life, so they've got a purpose and a direction and they're heading in that direction then the ability to say no be, uh, becomes stronger because they have a direction. And so let's say someone's heading, you know, metaphorically speaking, someone's heading south, uh, the INFJ is heading south towards something. If someone says, hey, I'm going west or I'm going east, can you give me a lift? The INFJ can say no, because they're actually determined to, to head south. They've got a reason to go south and they just, practically can't go east or west. They, they need to go south. So that uh, that ability to say no kind of is strengthened with life direction and purpose. So setting boundaries is a process or developing it, I should say, is a process. And it, it's important to to see it as that because it's like, okay, I want to, I can see where I'm going wrong now with boundaries. 
now I want to do make, have really healthy boundaries. And if we, we don't give ourselves room to actually develop it, then we can begin to shame ourselves when we're recognizing we don't have good boundaries and then are still, um, you know, we find ourselves still operating in, in a way that is unhealthy, then we then we can have the added issue of starting to shame ourselves for not being perfect or not having the, the a perfect boundary in that situation. So it's important to see it as a process and that for the most part, it's like, for a lot of people, it's kind of recognizing the boundary violation um, after um, the event. It's like, let's say the person gets home and they start and they're feeling not feeling right and they can recognize ah oh, that's right i let that happen or i agree to that that i didn't want to agree to um you know i just want to make it clear that so there's two ways our boundaries can be violated either somebody violates our boundary and we don't enforce it or we violate our own boundary in a sense they kind of overlapped but what i mean is when when somebody's encroaching on our boundary would often feel an anger associated with that so let's say someone starts moving into your physical space to a, to a point where it's actually uncomfortable for you then usually anger is a sign that um, that something's wrong so anger is often a cue that a boundary is being violated and again that can be a challenge for a lot of people and especially INFJs, because if, 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 it was, if a person is shamed growing up for feeling angry, then that, that anger, when it's dealt with appropriately, um, turns into healthy boundaries. So we feel a, an anger feeling like, what's going on? There's something not right here. Uh, this person is too close or, or they're, they're, they're getting into my physical space. That anger alerts the self that something's wrong and then they can take action to either ask them to move back or the the, the INFJ can sort of um, step away to get that distance again. Um, so anger is a good sign that uh, a boundary is being violated and it's a cue to take action. The other way is when the INFJ themselves um, violates their own boundary. And what that could look like is the INFJ agrees to doing something that they don't want to do or didn't want to do. And what that usually turns into is anger towards the self. And you could almost say resentment. So if the INFJ is um, resenting what they're doing, it's most likely because they've agreed to do something that they didn't want to do. And, um, and that anger is turned inwards, inward towards the self. Now that can apply to the first example as well when um, someone takes um, takes some physical space from the INFJ and they're feeling that anger and are, are uncomfortable with it, but don't address it and continue to stay in a situation where they're um, feeling uh, violated in their physical boundary. If the INFJ main stays in that place, they're going to stay uncomfortable and that sets the INFJ up to shaming themselves or being angry with themselves for not asserting the boundary. So they're the two ways that it can, uh, two main ways that boundaries are, uh, are violated. Either someone violates our boundary and we don't enforce it, or um, we agree to do something. We violate our own boundaries, our own limits, and agree to do things that then we resent. So I hope you found this video helpful, informative and empowering. Uh, feel free to leave your comments about your own experiences of boundary setting and, and so on. I appreciate if you like the video, share the video if you found it helpful. Really appreciate uh, your subscription if you're finding the, the content valuable. And again, feel free to uh, visit Patreon if you would like to support me uh, in making more videos like this. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.